What's up, Ninja Nation, YouTube Nation? Welcome back for another wonderful episode. Alright. Um. Final chapter, page 176. Ah, yes. Gary told me, um. Uh, ah, yes, sorry. Um, Gary told me to meet him here on the third floor. Hi, my name's Brittany. Dr. M said you'd be here. Unfortunately, he can't show you the tour and get, show you your office because he's in surgery helping the other surgeons. But I can give you the, the tour if you'd like. Wait, what? Hold on. Did you say I get my own office? Yes, Mr. Rivers. Everyone under Mr. Gary's command gets their own office. She sat down at her part of the desk. She took a sip of her Dunkin' Donuts sweet tea. All right, come on. I'll show you the ropes. They began to walk down the hallway to the right. They, they began to walk down the hallway to the right. This is for your tools and, and your whatnots. She pointed to a padlocked door. To, she turned around and began walking backwards. When Dr. M gets out of surgery, I'll leave a note for him to give you a key to the utility closet. For the first time in forever. For the first time in forever. Sorry. Anyway, had to get that on my system. Uh, for the first time in forever, I actually feel like I belong. No, like this job has meaning. Granted, at 14 American dollars an hour, the income won't be anywhere near my contract jobs. But here, the Americans. But to hear the Americans talk, this is part of the "quote unquote" American dream. So why not? I'll try to keep it up after I find the Black Dragon scumball and figure out what is going on at Vidal and Vizel. Why? Why on earth? Is Master Raiden Lee in the same building as the members of the Black Dragon Clan? He was pulled out of his thoughts. Brittany turned to... Brittany turned to him. Locked eye contact and said something of, of a question. Not knowing what she said, he instinctively said, yes, I'm fine. Sorry, just excited for first day on the job. You know, first day jitters. Oh, you'll do fine. You just don't do anything stupid or with lack of common sense and you'll be fine. That's how our last tech guy got fired. An awkward laugh. My, you sure are a quiet one, anyway. She stopped and pointed her hand toward the left. I guess Dr. M wants you to stick around. Most people don't get their own plaques till they are three years in. Excuse me. Plaque, he thought up. He, no, excuse me. He looked up from his thoughts. Shinokage gen gently smiled. Well, would you look at that? He walked over to the screwed-in maple wood with flame-etched words. Page 177. Cody Rivers, Maintenance Plumbing Electrical. 410-516-6000, extension 42. Shinokage ran his fingers over the plaque. 
His fingers slowly crept over the hills and valleys of the lines and crevices, feeling each letter imprinted into the flesh of the wax-dipped maple plaque that was his. A stage name, but still, it was his. When he finally became of age to join Emperor Raiden Lee's personal military, like his father and his father before him, my father had one, had one in the royal... What? Like his father and his father before him. But that's because he was Raiden Lee's top-ranking military general and strategist, his father, that is, and a teacher of the elite class that was eligible for the first-degree Dragon Belt testing and training. Well, no, that's a lie. I did get that custom-forged katanas from Dad upon completing the first, the first degree. Technically, Master Raiden Lee forged the katanas, so I guess that counts. It was tradition to have cer a ceremony of the chosen, part to honor those who've fallen in its deadly training, and part two, part one to honor those who've fallen to its deadly training, and part two to honor those few who made it to the first degree dragon belt fewer made it to the second chosen by mother earth herself it is a gorgeous engraved masterpiece um glad you like it dr gary said once you get settled in he'd like you to complete these tasks she handed him a slip of paper and I'll leave you to it. If there's anything else I can do for you, I'll be down the hall. Well, Miss Brittany, was it? He paused. Yep, that's me. Thank you for the official tour. Sorry I was so quiet. I was deep in thought. Oh, it's okay. Have a wonderful rest of your day. He gave a subtle wink and a tip of the hat to the reddish, to the blonde hair reddish blonde, blonde brunette um thanks she turned to hide her blush and walked away he smiled and entered the room leather chair decent sized room nice sized desk black sign huh Nice size desk. Yeah, that'll do. To the left of the room was the painting that mesmerized him when he first arrived. Such a powerful message. Page 178. You must be like myself. He closed the door with his foot. A great legend like me. Only I didn't have paintings everywhere of my legend. Mine are campfire ghost stories. What great things have you done? He asked the painting with a hint of curiosity. Anyway, Mr. Christ, I, ha I have much to do. We can talk later. He unraveled the now scrunched up list. Fixed the plumbing on the seventh floor. Some electrical needs to be done on the third. Um, he trailed off as he walked around the desk to the leather chair. He went to place his arms on the desk, but in his elbows, brushed... Hold on. His elbows brushed against a neatly folded two-page letter. Huh? He peeked over the over the list. What's this? The paper the piece of paper had his name in fancy font 
on it. Mr. Cody Rivers, for your eyes only. He sat the task list down and picked up the neatly crested triangle from the desk. Dear Mr. Rivers, I take it you found the room. I set up for you. I, I, I take it you found the room I set up for you. I hope everything is in order. I took the liberty of buying a small potted fern for your office. Always been a f fern believer in plants bringing life and a certain pizzazz to the workplace. I also brought that painting of yours up from the lobby. From the hall across the from my office and hung it up for you. I regret that I was not able to meet you this afternoon and give you the tour myself. But as you know, I was pulled away to help a critical emergency. The task list that I had left for you should keep you busy until I get out of surgery. Now, to answer your question, who is Jesus? I'm sorry I didn't answer your question of curiosity earlier, but um, I'll try my best now. Jesus Christ is the one and only offspring of Yahweh, the great I Am, God of creation, God of faith, Christianity, and Jesus was born of a virgin. Mary was the mom, Joseph was the father, and Jesus was a carpenter. But that's trivial knowledge. What made him famous and still talk to about, talked about today were two major things. Page 179. First being his teachings. Back then, the Roman word was law. If you stole from or even disrespected Roman rule, you were put to death. The second group that had powerful influence was the highest were the high priests. Jesus contradicted every teaching the high priestess high priests taught. It eventually began to fly in the face of the Roman way. Constant complaints from the high priests. Finally, to quiet the angered crowd and stop the constant bickering of the priests, Jesus Christ of Nazareth was found and arrested by Roman guards. He was brought to a Roman-style court session. He was tried and given a criminal's death sentence for charges of blasphemy and disturbing the peace. Jesus lived as fully human, but never gave in to any temptation set before him. He was also part demigod, which allowed him to do crazy miracles like healing the unhealable, making this blind making the blind see and the lame walk. These charges placed in Jesus were false and not true. He was chained up to a wooden post. He was beaten bloody, whipped with a nine-headed spiked whip. They beat and mocked and ripped his clothes, then gave the prince of heaven a crown of thorns that pre they pressed deeply into his scalp. Then from, the, from there on, he was forced to carry a large cross all the way up to Calvary Mountain through crowds of angry people that cursed him. When Jesus got to the top of the mountain, the Romans guards 
nailed Jesus to thick timbers. He was raised to the dugout, dugout hole. He was hung to die in scorching hot weather, suspended only by the nine-inch nails in his palms and feet. Then to make sure he was truly dead, he was pierced by a Roman spear. He was brought down and wrapped in a white cloth. His family couldn't afford a tomb, and if it wasn't for the generosity of a noble king, his body would have been thrown into the valley to be eaten by the animals of the wild. The second thing he did was defy death itself and to prove all his teachings of heaven. His father who created the everything was real. In three short days, rose the dead rose from the dead to prove the existence of the living God, Yahweh. To show the people there was not even a shadow of a doubt that he was indeed the Messiah. A gigantic boulder that was that took six men to put, to move into place was moved to the side on the third day. Mary, the mother, went to the tomb to grieve, but to her surprise, the gigantic stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. Then a man appeared before Mary and asked, Why do you mourn an empty tomb? He is risen. He allowed a hundred plus to see him, to touch the wounds in his hands and the spear wound on his side, so that no one could discredit the legacy he built. Well, Mr. Rivers, I'm not very good at explaining these things, but I hope this answered your question. I hope this letter helps you find your faith. All is not lost. Thanks for joining the team. Dr. Miracle, Gary. Tears streamed down Kambe Halamakri's face as he folded the letter and gently laid it on the desk. Wow, I thought I had a messed up life. This Jesus guy is really awesome. I wish he'd described more. All that pain and suffering done just to get denounced and spit upon in today's culture. 181, page 181. Why well, go through all that pain for nobody to gain access to your father in heaven? Who am I to deserve such a gift? Like, I kill people for a living. Some completely innocent for money. I even take pleasure in some of the murders. How can I, me, uh, be worthy of that caliber of love. I'm not worthy of that caliber of love. The only one that should love me is myself. You're wrong, a voice said suddenly. Alarmed, he looked around and grabbed a letter opener and flicked it around with remarkable speed. A winged man appeared. This time, the spirit was not just a human-shaped light, but an actual detail in flesh being. The man had a soft, round baby face with a few freckles sprinkled across his face. His features were almost that of a red-headed cheerleader schoolgirl. He wore some kind of metal gold armor. The, the, energy, <laughs> the energy he was vibing was intoxicating. Whatever this being was, it was, whether it was male or if it was whatever it was, <laughs> 
<laughs> Kambe Alamakari wasn't gay, but good lord, this winged creature before him was gorgeous. Do not be alarmed, Kambe. I am Gabriel, angel of love and wisdom, angel to the great I am, God Almighty himself. Do you have some water? The fly down here was rather long. Unsure of this spirit's intentions, he simply said, Um, yeah, give me a second. A gust of wind blew, and he returned in a few seconds with a cup of ice water, with a cup of ice and a bottle of water. Thank you, the angel said. He walked over to the chair in the corner and sat down. The white wing... The white-winged being lifted up and folded its wings gently over the padded leather chair. Staring is not polite, Mr. Hellemockery. Kambe shook his head. Sorry, is this really happening? Are you really real? Or have I been drugged and I'm hallucinating? Gabriel chuckled. You think you're dreaming? He poured the water in the cup and set the bottle down. He moved his right wing out. He extended his right wing out. He carefully plucked a six inch feather from the left wing. No, from the right wing, I'm sorry. From the right wing. The wings shuddered as they fluffed themselves. He extended his arm. Here, take this for proof. Touch it. Feel it. Smell it. It's real. I'm real. It's as real as, I'm as real as the chair you sit on or the desk you are in front of. Kambe Halamakri got up and slowly moved towards the feather. He placed his hand on the being's hand and gently picked up the feather. Kambe stood there twirling the large, whiter-than-snowbird feather in his hand. Page 182. Well, I'll be damned. This is real. The angel, the angel burrowed his, its eyebrows. No, I'd rather you not be. That's why I, heaven has kept trying to contact you. That's why I'm here. You may think you're not righteous enough to join our battle against evil. Sure, you have plenty of blood on your hands, but worse men and women have asked for forgiveness. What if I'm not worthy of your God's love? Better yet, what if... This God can't save me. I am very broken inside. I don't know if you know my past. Oh, I skipped ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know if you know my past, but I'm very, I'm pretty broken. Like a vase that fell to the ground, shattered, and was put back together with school glue. I contract kill not because I love taking lives. Well, that is part of it, but I mainly... But I mainly do it for the adrenaline rush of the kill. I love the security of easy money. I try and drown my pain in contracts. If I'm focused on a mission, besides how to do... If I'm focused on the mission, I don't have to worry about the pain or the grief. Besides... How do you heal from watching your parents being butchered before you, knowing I could have done something, but I didn't. I was, I was too involved in my own childish fear. I didn't act in time to save them. I'm blessed with super speed, and I didn't do anything. I stood still. So to compensate, I try and fill my blade and my hands with other people's lives to cope. How can you use somebody like that in your righteous war against evil?
Gabriel sat up and now fully focused on Kambe, hurt by his words. You really think you're trash. You've been so conditioned to think that you're expendable that now you accepted it. Wow. Gabriel brushed his soft red hair back and scratched the back of his scalp. He looked up at the ceiling. I knew he was broken, but you should have told me he was critical. I would have come into his life sooner. Dude, you, you, you can't blame yourself for what happened to your parents. The Black Dragon are a bunch of unhinged psychopaths. Why not? If I was more focused and faster, and I actually acted, maybe... He choked on his words, now sobbing uncontrollably. Maybe Mom and Pop would still be alive. I'm not worth saving if I can't even save my parents from being slaughtered the way they were. Gabriel stood up angrily. Be silent, you stupid boy. I will not have you speaking ill of yourself no more. Gabriel's voice softened, but still had hints of anger in it. First and foremost, you were made a unique and powerful masterpiece. You're not some lab rat or experiment. My father, your creator, designed you skillfully and wonderfully made. Flaws and weaknesses, all who you are. Page 183. You've listened to the world's lies far too long. Do you think the shepherd cares less for the sheep that, that is injured? Um, no, I guess not. Kambe plucked a Kleenex from the box. Oh, okay. We're gonna... Page 183. 